this is what the fasting in the mind is. You have to get rid of this ability to constantly dissect the world up into this and that based on your own opinion. So someone is 35 years old, 40 years old. And in addition to that, that kind of deep programming mm -hmm. uh, where they were born as an uncarved block, but then, you know, really changed and sculpted by these rules and regulations and programming, not just one through four, one through seven, but like now 20, 30. And every time you turn on, you know, to modern, turn on a TV or watch the news or whatever you get programmed. What do you say someone who's 35 or 40 to get back to being that uncarved block? Yeah, it's a, well, that's to one of my books, as, as you as you know, Kurt, is uh, Fasting the Mind, right? Fasting the Mind is one of the, of the great Taoist remedies for that. Now, what is that? Now, Fasting the Mind was a, it was a, uh, a phrase that was coined by Zhuangzi, who was the second most famous or, you know, equal with Lao Tzu as the famous, most famous Taoist. And he existed also in the Warring States period. And and the story in the in the Zhuangzi, the Fasting the Mind passage is about uh, there's a ruler in, in the state of Wei, right? And so Yun Wei, actually Confucius in this story plays the mouthpiece of Zhuangzi. There's other stories in the Zhuangzi text where Zhuangzi makes fun of Confucius, but in this right. story, you know, he's he's playing the sage figure because of that period of time he was considered like the most learned sage, for example. And so Confucius in this story is telling Yun Wei, oh, actually Yun Wei is telling Confucius, I'm going to go to this state and I'm going to make the rule because there's a ruler in the state of way who's treating the people poorly, you know, and, and, and he's rich and he's, you know, he's just your average day grub. Right. And so, uh, young way is going, I'm going to go there and I'm going to make him benevolent. I'm going to make him humble and this and that. And, and Confucius keeps shooting him down saying, you've got too many plans and too many opinions about how to change him. You need to fast the mind, and and young ways kind of like, what, what do you mean by fast the mind? Like I don't drink any wine, you know. I, I often I go for periods of time where I don't eat, and he's like, well, that's the fasting of the body. That's not the fasting of the mind. You need to fast this thing. In 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 Taoism, it's uh, in Chinese, it's called Qing. Uh, so in Roman in Pinyin Romanization, you'd spell that Q I N G, and so this idea, uh, Zhuangzi kind of employs. It's from Maltzer, so Moist logical theory, which is uh, Maltzer was also another sage-like figure in, in the Warring States period, but he was more like more like Confucius, you could say. He was, uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a lot we could say about him, but he had this idea of Qing, where, and this is very similar to uh, in in Hindu philosophy and Buddhism as well, where we have this problem in our mind. Uh, well, before I get to that, Qing actually means species-specific essence. In, in Chinese, in, in, from the Moist logical uh, theory perspective. And so uh, Zhuangzi says that Qing actually is a flaw in humans. So, you know, we could look at a horse gallop, right? And, and the horse's graceful gallop is its Qing. But our Qing, even though we have it, is a flaw. And our, and our, and our Qing, our species-specific essence, is the ability to discern between this and that. Mm. So now why he says that is because it's, it's all well and good to discern between this and that, but usually what happens is we overlay that with an artificial linguistic framework that we've been taught with, which creates right and wrong, you know, good and bad, all based on how we see the world personally, right? And so hmm. uh, Zhuangzi, or Confucius as Zhuangzi, or Zhuangzi as Confucius, I should say, is explaining this to Yan Wei that this is what the fasting in the mind is. You have to get rid of this ability to constantly dissect the world up into this and that based on your own opinion. And so this is what the fasting in the mind is. And, and the lifestyle approach to that is, which I explain in my book, is about not allowing, for example, the news, right? The media are, are a big influence on people's lives in this modern day. So if we block, because we take in energy through our eyes and ears, right? Which affect, our, which affect us. And so if we block that energy from coming into our mind, this begins to work deeper on this ability of this and that, where obviously to couple with this, you want to go into start practicing a form of meditation as well and, mm -hmm. and actually have a, make it a daily habit, right? I speak about a lot about 
in fasting the mind and also in emotional intuition for peak performance about these sort of these four fundamentals that make us human, which is uh, which are, is sleep, exercise, meditation, and nutrition. And if you keep these four uh, lifestyle uh, principles in in sync with yourself, then you won't your mind won't be thrown off uh, by you know the media and and by you know, you should be like this or you shouldn't be like that. And it's not as simplistic as that. Like it, it takes longer and longer and longer to do. Like the whole fasting the mind lifestyle approach is not, you know, you're not going to be enlightened tomorrow, right? But you're going to be uh, at least observant of what's infiltrating your consciousness mm. and influencing and enhancing your ching to react to the changing landscape. And so that's sort of what Zhuangzi's point is. Like we have to practice fasting the mind because if we don't, then we're only going to continue to have strong opinions. We're only going to continue to think this is right and that is wrong. And in the end of the day, who was right and who was wrong, you know? And so, yeah. and that's where Taoism in some sense, you know, has, would have a problem. Well, it has a problem with Confucianism, right? Taoism was a response to Confucianism in some sense. It's a critique of Confucianism because of Confucianism, I liked what you mentioned before, Kurt, the similarities between Confucianism and the Judeo-Christian traditions, right? Like there's this very moral-based rules and regulation society that they build and in psychology they build where Taoism is very amoral mm. because when you peel the layers back of your personality and you dissect the Qing, then you realize that, wait up, like my... What I think is good, Kurt actually thinks is evil. So, like, who is who is right here, fundamentally? You know, that doesn't mean we 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 should circumvent common sense and you know intuition and this and that. I'm not I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that this artificial linguistic framework that we've sort of downloaded as a human for through socialization is how we filter society. And so we need to kind of peel those layers away to, to see reality then as it truly is.